Welcome back, Bike Club listeners. My name is Antonio Fabrero. I'm the founder and CEO of AdSep LLC and today's host of the Bike Club podcast. On today's episode of the Bike Club podcast, we're going to be talking about unlisted apps, how they affect developers, small businesses, and young entrepreneurs. Welcome back, Bike Club listeners. As mentioned, today's episode will be focused on unlisted apps. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with what unlisted apps are, essentially they're apps that are unlisted on the app stores, meaning they're not listed or downloadable from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Now, if you're familiar with Google Play and you're an avid Android developer, you'll know that this is been a common feature for the past couple years on Android devices on the Google Play Store. However, this is a new feature for Apple uh, developers. Uh, Apple just recently in, in 2022 has announced that they will now start allowing unlisted apps on the Apple App Stores. So one of the questions we've been getting here a lot at AdSap is how does that affect our clients and what does that mean for us as a company? And the answer is it actually benefits us a lot, specifically the smaller businesses who do not want to have apps listed publicly. Uh, meaning if you are a small business or a corporation and you have a mobile app or a iPad application or tablet application that you want to have um, only, only be available to your employees. This became a challenge on Apple devices because you would have to basically have an Apple uh, work account and kind of publish it through your own um, company portal, which was fine. Uh, it's just, you know, it's an expense to the company and if you're a smaller business, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Now you have the ability to essentially upload the app uh, to Apple, uh, their, their test, flight, test flight environment, and basically give your employees a link to download the app, unlisted from the store, meaning this link is private, meaning people can't search on the Apple App Store to see how, um, or to, to see your app or download your app without be, be, without being given the link directly. Um, and like I said, this has been possible on Google for multiple years now, but it, you know, just recently Apple has allowed this. Uh, this is also very good for startup companies who are in the beta phase. Uh, when, you're, when you're testing out an application or you're coming up with an MVP, uh, a lot of our clients, one of, the, one of the first questions we get is, how do we get this out to beta testers? Or how do we test this? How do we get it out to focus groups? Uh, and in the past, it's not always been easy, especially on Apple devices, because you had to basically set up a test flight account, uh, get that app submitted and approved for testing by Apple, and then kind of get all these users, uh, your, your beta users, your beta testers, onto test flight to download this app and test. Uh, and there's limitations to that as well. Uh, there was, in the past, I believe, you can only have 100 internal testers. And um, I believe there was also a limitation on the, ex the number of external testers you can have on Apple. Now it's a lot simpler. You, you simply upload this app and you send the, your beta testers this link for them to download the app onto their device and, and test privately. Um, so this is a huge benefit. However, Apple has stated, and there's, there's not too much details about it yet, there are limitations to this uh, unlisted app program, meaning you will have to go through some, some sort of application process to kind of get the app listed out there. I'm not too sure how rigorous that will be right now, uh, but it is something that we need to keep an eye out, eye out for. Uh, and this is most likely just for security purposes. You know, Apple's big, big concern has always been and always will be security. And they don't want people, developers like ourselves here at AdSap, developing harmful apps and just pushing it out you know, uh, freely to users that can download it without it being properly vetted uh, for harmful malware and whatnot. So it, it is important basically to you know, kind of have this review process. And I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think it's sort of a good thing. Um, but back to the bigger picture, what exactly does this solve for developers? Again, as I stated, it solves the issue of beta testing and getting apps out to companies, uh, or inter for companies to get apps out internally to their employees, um, or even, even think of schools could have these now, you know, internal applications that they can easily distribute to people in, in a private manner. So this is big. 
Uh, and more specifically, I want to talk about um, some of our, our small business examples. Uh, one of our, our small business clients, we currently actually have them set up on our test flight environment. And what they do is every time they get a new employee that needs added to this tablet application, we actually send them a, a test flight link and create a test flight account for them. And this is fine, however, there's a limitation to that, meaning that the way we currently have it set up, we can only get them to 100 uh, employees or 100 users of this device. While that might not be an issue uh, for them, you can imagine how that's an issue for larger corporations. And granted, like I said, Apple does have um, the Apple company profile, where you can basically create a, a company portal that has like a company private um, app store, where all the apps published to this app store are only internal to the company uh, that, that owns this private app store. The problem with this is that, that, that this doesn't necessarily work for a lot of our smaller businesses because it is pricey. Um, and a lot of these smaller businesses don't have the manpower or resources to kind of maintain that internal app store. So we are very excited about this opportunity here with the unlisted apps because this now gives um, companies who kind of have that smaller budget the ability to create these internal applications and easily publish them to their employees. And it also no longer limits them to having to use Android devices or go through the Google Play Store. You can now kind of do this feature through Apple devices. Um, and, you know, it, I say this and I know we talk a lot about on this channel here and on this podcast about Apple devices and, 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 and iOS. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't develop for Android as well because we, we absolutely do. Um, it just happens to be that most of the clients come to us, iOS is the more popular platform. Um, I, I don't know, you know, I, I know stati statistically speaking, um, Android devices are more, more popular worldwide, um, but from our experience, we have seen a lot more clients come to us and ask about Apple devices. So that's why we kind of are highlighting it on today's episode, and we want to make our clients and our, and our future listeners and our current listeners aware that this is now an available feature for iOS devices. So now to answer the question that all of you are probably wondering, how exactly do unlisted apps work? Or if I'm a developer, how do I get my app to be an unlisted app so I can distribute it to my friends, family, and maybe my employees? And now the answer is very simple. For Google, we've done this in the past where you upload your app to their version of uh, their, their, their testing environment. And once the app is in their testing environment, you can simply uh, add beta testers through this unlisted app link. Uh, there is no approval process required for this. You kind of just upload it, uh, get, get the app ready to go, and kind of generate that link and send it out to the people that you want to have the, the unlisted app or, or the, the beta app, whatever you want to call it. For Apple, though, it's going to be a little bit different. Apple has stated that there will be some sort of approval process. So what you're going to do is basically you're going to submit a request to receive an unlisted link for that app. So once your app is uploaded to Apple's environment or to test flight, you will request a you will submit a request for an unlisted app link. Once you submit that request, it will either be approved or denied. Once it's approved, you can basically again begin sending that link out to the beta testers or your employees or whoever you want to receive this unlisted app. So it's not going to be too complicated. The only hiccup here is, in classic Apple fashion, is that there is an approval process. And as we've talked about before on this podcast, it can be frustrating as to Apple rejecting your apps over things that you think are kind of unnecessary. And to be honest, we're not 100% sure yet um, what the restrictions of these unlisted apps are going to be, but I imagine they will be severely toned back compared to what the restrictions are or what the approval process is when you're spinning to the actual app store. Um, we have not worked with, with any of these yet, but as more information comes out about this and as we work with uh, these unlisted app types moving forward, we'll be sure to update you, you guys and, and uh, through, our, through our blog um, and through our, maybe our future podcast episodes. Um, so for, for more information about unlisted apps and how they work, I encourage you to to check out our blog post. We have a blog post up on our blog uh, listed, I'll read the name off here, it's called Unlisted Apps, or I'm sorry, it's called Apple Now Allows Unlisted Apps. Uh, and it kind of explains what they are at a high level and how they kind of help us out here at AtsApp and how they'll help out our clients. Kind of reiterating what we've talked about it on today's episode of this podcast. Um, I also encourage you, if you're interested more in 
Apple's uh, version of unlisted apps to check out their documentation. And uh, we can put a link to their documentation in uh, the bio and description of, the, of this episode uh, for your, for your, uh, for your reading, reading enjoyment. Um, but like always, we really appreciate you uh, listening to, today, to today's episode of the Bike Club Podcast. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment below. Also, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, if you also have any other questions about different types of content or topics you would like to hear about moving forward, please let us know in the comments as well. And uh, we appreciate you hopping on uh, and listening to our podcast. Let's build together.